Hello, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to learn more about Missoula County Public Schools and funding. I'm here with Superintendent Micah Hill, and we're going to have a conversation about school funding. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me, Joel. Oh, you're most welcome. So, uh, a lot of people know that the district is finding a shortfall of money, and as I mentioned before we uh, started recording, MCAT records all the school board meetings and, and the one in which um, you know, a large deficit was being considered and announced has seen over 800 views. So, good side, people in town really care about education. Yeah. They're really concerned about all aspects of it and they're willing to participate and make some of those meetings more meaningful maybe longer, and, but make choices maybe more considered and informed. But somebody might say, what is the financial challenge? What's going on? And I know a question that had come up quite a bit in the comments we saw on the Facebook video. Well, Jeepers, why don't people know what's going on? Why is this sudden news to us? Sure, yeah, and I think uh, the challenges for school districts, and Missoula is not unique, uh, that are facing deficits is, is really three parts. Uh, the first part is what we refer to as ESSER funding. That was funding that was given to school districts based on uh, the socioeconomic population of your school district. Um, and Missoula County Public Schools received about $34 million. Wow. And that was to prepare, prevent, and respond to COVID. And so when, when the pandemic hit, we had a, a large number of students who suddenly exited our schools. People didn't feel safe, didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, and we, we saw a, a decline in enrollment. Um, and while we hoped that those students would be coming back to our school district, um, that never really materialized. And so we held on to staffing and we added additional staffing using those ESSER funds. Um, and so we had positions like behavior interventionists. We added hours and, and time for our nurses. Um, we included uh, uh, art teachers. Um, and so just a variety of positions that we were able to uh, bolster um, what we offer in, in Missoula uh, schools. And that money, oh my God, sorry, yeah, you're okay. the money came from the federal government, the ESSER. Federal. It was an emergency response to COVID. Was, what are we going to do yeah. to hold kids and teachers together in this trying time? Exactly, exactly. And so uh, the Board of Trustees for Missoula um, decided to spend about 95% of that on salary and benefits for employees. Um, yeah. And so people who uh, helped reduce our class sizes so we could have, we could spread uh, students out, people who uh, pr provided academic and behavior intervention for students um, as they came back from uh, basically not being in school and yeah. how do we continue to support them, how do we address the learning gap, those kind of things. So that's one component and that was about five million dollars for this year. Um, and that, those funds go away and there's nothing to replace it. Because um, the feds say, well, COVID's over. It's not over, but it's not the, the problem that it was that years it was. ago. Yep. Yeah. So that goes away. Um, so we had four years of that. And so if I were a parent with a young child who started kindergarten at MCPS, and now they're in fourth or fifth grade, uh, I haven't known any different or any, you know, I, I just wasn't aware of what was going on as far as, you know, our schools. I just knew that my kids had art every day. Yeah. And I knew that there were behavior interventionists and academic interventionists, and now those have gone away. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, I talked a little bit about, and that's declining enrollment. Yeah. Since 2019, our elementary district has seen a decline of almost 500 students. Wow. And a major fo uh, um, component of uh, school funding is what we refer to as A and B. It's average number belonging. And so we do an enrollment count in October, and we do an enrollment count in February, and we average those two numbers together. And each student represents about $6,500 worth of funding from the, from the state. So if you take 6,500, multiply it by 500 students, you're talking $3.4 million of budget deficit wow. uh, moving forward. And so and it's not like those, we lost those students overnight. It wasn't just like suddenly they disappeared. Yeah. This has been an ongoing problem from a, 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 just a, a new students coming into the district, um, looking at kindergarten, uh, we're looking at birth rates, those kind of things. So we've just lost that um, over time, but we've held on to the staffing. And so now we have to essentially right size um, the district. And so we're trying to make our staffing more representative of what our accreditation standards are. And the enrollment. And if people are watching the, the, to understand, it's not that there was a pandemic and parents said, well, I'm not sending my kid to school and I'm done with that. Right. Part of it was the movement 
within the city or county, and part of it would be those kids aged into a different uh, middle school. Yep. Or so at the same time that we saw declining enrollment in the elementary, when we peaked in 2021, we've seen those students now matriculate into the high school area, and so our enrollments at the high school have actually gone up, but the elementary have gone down. Mm -hmm. So in that same time, we've also had situations where our special education population has grown um, during that same amount of time, where we went from roughly 12% of our population had special services to moving closer to 17, 18%. Oh. Um, so declining enrollments, but an increased population that needs more services, and so we've had to add in um, services for those students. We've also seen an increase in um, uh, families, uh, refugee families, um, students who speak English as a second language uh, or don't speak English at all. So we've had a lot of these things that we've tried to bolster support for within our community. Um, and so we just see that as being a, a component of it. So, sure. so you have the loss of ESSER funding and then you have the declining enrollment. And then the last piece that's really been impactful for us is w just the inflation. Yeah. And so <clears throat> the state says, um, uh, you know, for this next year, you get a 3% inflationary increase. And so the inflationary increase for school districts, like much like city governments and county governments, is capped. There's, there's a law that says, here's how we're going to figure out what that is. In years previous, this is the most it's ever been. Years previous, we've seen inflationary increases of less than 1%. Wow. Um, and so, uh, <clears throat> but what we know as, as taxpayers, as families of, of people who live in this community, is that we've experienced more than 3% inflation. Sure. Look at the cost of eggs, milk, bread, gas, property taxes, paint, lumber, like you name it. Every, the price of everything has gone up, and that's same and true for public schools where we've seen uh, inflationary increases in our property and liability insurance uh, just go through the roof. It's up almost 100%. Uh, from five years ago. Yeah, insurance really took a hit if somebody, you know, is a homeowner or um, has renter's insurance or something, they've noticed that insurance rates really have gone up dramatically. Right, and so part of that is the evaluation that we get, we belong to an, a pooled insurance group and they come in and they say, well, five years ago, the cost to replace this building was, I'll just use a random number, $5 million. Yeah. And today the cost to replace that building is $10 million, it's doubled. So we have to make sure that we cover our losses should something happen. And so we've seen these really uh, big increases. Another area where we've seen just really big increases uh, is in utilities, um, in electric, gas, water, sewer. We have to pay all those same bills that, that everybody else does. And we manage 20 different buildings just in MCPS. Um, right. And they're large buildings, and they cost a lot of money to run. Um, and so when you look at a budget, um, you know, when you say 90% of our budget is encapsulated in salary and benefits, meaning we're, we're in a people business. We yeah. pay people to uh, educate kids and take care of kids. And the other 10% are the things that I'm talking about, like the insurance, the utilities, uh, paper, books, all of those things that have gone up in price. But when, you're, when those things go up, and I, I'll just use an example, if, if um, electricity went up $190,000 uh, for the district, I, those are must-haves. We have to have those. If I take that away, we can't operate our schools. Right. So where do I find that extra $190,000 that isn't budgeted for? I have to go into my staff. I, there's no other place to go to to, to recoup. Right. And um, to explain to people uh, the funding, because you've made several references, like this, the money is coming from the state. Yep. So people pay their property tax in the county, but it actually goes to Helena, and then it's reapportioned back from whence it had come. Exactly. So uh, a graph that we commonly use is just a circle, and uh, or you could even use like a glass. If I have a glass of water, the state will say, we're going to tell you what your maximum budget is as a school district, and it's based on your enrollments. So if your enrollments go down, your maximum budget can go down. But the state also says, we are only going to fund 80% of that maximum budget. Mm -hmm. If you want anything above a basic education in your community, you have to go to your taxpayers and they have to approve what we call operational levies. So if you want things like art and music and foreign language and things that aren't necessarily required for graduation, um, even activities and athletics, uh, any of those kind of things, your community has to say, yes, we support that. And I think that's one of the, the, the uh, best things about Missoula is that our community has overwhelmingly supported these operational levies um, year after year. 
They've also supported bonds, which are different. Bonds can only yeah. be spent on buildings. Right. Um, so we have to make up that other 20% in operational levies. Um, so if our budgets go up a little bit, then we're coming back to our taxpayers every year to say, we want to stay at 100% funding. Um, yeah. And would you please support that? And that's kind of a segue, right? Because that's where we are yeah. right now. Yeah. I, I hope people could follow that somewhat, that the money goes to the state. Then the state has requirements for graduation. At the state level, what students ought to know to get a diploma is determined. And at the state level, what the basic operating budget of each school district is, is also determined. Yep. And it's not as insidious as it may sound. No. To do, it's a way of trying to make sure everyone in the state is getting a certain level of education. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so when you have, uh, so you have this 80% of the state. So a great example in Missoula is that the, a state diploma, you need 20 credits to graduate. Mm. Missoula County Public Schools, you need 24 credits to graduate. So we have requirements above and beyond. We, In order for us to say, we want our kids to be competitive worldwide, to sit at any table with anybody else, uh, elbow to elbow and say, I am a qualified student for workforce, for the military, for college, whatever it may be after high school. That's the, the requirement that our trustees have put in place and said, this is what we expect from our students. So just that in and of itself is an additional burden to the budget. True. Um, so not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so specifically... Um, there is levy information, right, that Missoula County voters are being asked to vote upon. Yep. And the ballots are due May 7th. Um, do you want to explain a little bit about what the school district is asking? Yeah, so the district is asking for two levies. Um, one levy is the operational levy, um, which I talked about. That's that other 20%. On the yeah. elementary side, it's about $105,000 ask. Um, so that represents, I think, about a $0.79 cent, uh, um, a year um, increase in uh, property taxes for $100,000 of assessed value. Yeah. So one of the things I think that um, sometimes is, is missed in, in how complicated school funding and the formulas are is that your taxes are based on your assessed tax value by the state, not on the market value. Yeah. So if someone says, well, I have a million-dollar home, so I'm going to multiply 100 you know, that's times 10, now right. they want $79 from me. Yeah, and that's not the reality. The, ha the house is actually assessed much lower than yeah. the market value. So just that's one thing that we always try and clarify for people. Um, and then on the high school side, the uh, operational levy is about 400000 Again, we've had growing enrollments in our high schools, um, and so this just reflects that we're continuing to grow and that we've had to add staffing um, and do some of those things. So that's at 400, and it's around 400,000. I think it was a uh, dollar 65. Um, yeah, let me look. Yes, you're right. Or a dollar 24 per hundred thousand dollars in assessed. Uh, let's oh, see. sorry. <laughs> ah. uh, yep, dollar 65 oh, you a got year. It right. Yep, dollar 65 uh, a year per 100,000. So, you know, if you start thinking about it, well, that's, what's that a month, right? So, yeah. buck 65 divided by 12, we're talking 34 cents a month. Um, yeah, yeah. So, it's not. It's not a huge ask because that 400,000 is spread out over the entire Missoula County Public School boundary, not just the elementary boundary. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the, the first levy. The second levy, and probably the one that we're, we're um, most concerned about and the one that maybe people are less aware of, is what is referred to as a safety levy. So in school funding, uh, the state has said, in a couple of different areas, we recognize that school districts are were competing w for budget dollars uh, for things that maybe weren't once considered when we initially said, here's how the funding formula works. A great example of that is uh, technology. Uh, technology, we've, we've been around it now for you know, 30, 40 years, yeah. computers, all those kind Keeps of things. Keeps growing. It's growing. Uh, and so taxpayers about 10 years ago supported a technology levy for the school district. And so we were able to, instead of spending general fund dollars that usually go to you know, salary and benefits and supplies, we we're able to pull that away and say, we're going to support technology with these dollars. And so a safety levy is very similar. Right now, we estimate that Missoula County Public Schools spends anywhere from three and a half to $4 million a year on safety-related yeah. uh, expenses. That includes our school resource officers. It includes um, uh, the physical uh, components of a school, so our secure entries, our visitor check-in systems, fencing, glass, doors, locks. 
uh, camera systems, all of those things. Uh, and so anything that's safety related. And so what we're asking our voters to do is to help us offset those general fund expenditures. Right now we pay for them out of the general fund. And that right. competes for the same dollars that we're trying to pay classroom teachers with, interventionists, those things. And now we're asking, put it in the safety levy for us and, and let's support it that way. And so on the elementary side, we're asking for a million and a half uh, in that levy. Yeah. Um, uh, and then on the high school side, it's a million. So out of a $4 million expense, we're asking our taxpayers um, to support about uh, two and a half million dollars of that. Yeah, and and one would hope that the safety levy, um, you know, would really show that people care about safety in the schools. Absolutely, uh, it, it is a very lamentable trend. You it know, is. if you were to say to someone, "Well, 50 years ago this was an issue," they they would be scratching their heads exactly. so much. And so these are larger requests. Mm -hmm. The cost for the, the safety levy, $11.24 a year per 100000 in assessed property tax value. Yep. And for the, the high school one, that's the elementary safety, $4.08 per 100000 in assessed property value. With people bearing in mind that it's not like what they'll find on Zillow or some other assessments of what your property would be worth. Rather, the, the state assessment, which is often half. Yeah, it's so, not more. So, so one thing to do would be to go in, if you really wanted to calculate, what would this actually cost me if I'm voting yeah, for this? Uh, yes, study? for everything. Go to, go to your tax statement uh, and then and look up what is your assessed tax value on your home. Yeah. And then you can do the math on that. When we put out the ballots, it will actually say uh, the amount based on 100000 which we know there's not a $100,000 assessed value yeah. in, in Missoula. Not anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, 100, 300, and 600,000. So yeah. getting us closer into the into the ballpark. Ballpark of, of people that have. Like. Yep. Well, I want to make sure I, I, I saw we had a question here about, uh, we've heard a lot about the 95 mills in the media. Could you explain that? Have we covered the 95 mills? We haven't. Okay. Um, and so this was something that came up um, very early, right after everybody got their new property tax evaluations. Uh, and and um, the uh, Association of County Commissioners um, got together and said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. The state is sitting on a surplus, and yet they continue to levy 95 mills. School districts, when we levy, we actually levy to a dollar amount. We don't levy to mills. Mm. And so this 95 mills, the, the state um, uh, levied against uh, all the counties in, in Montana, and they and if you look on your tax statement, it usually says something about tax equalization for schools or something along. Those right, lines. the idea that the poor uh, districts would have a, a chance because they're sharing with the the better exactly. off districts. So, so the the differential in property tax value, the the counties calculated that for the state to take to get the exact same amount of money as last year from this year, based on these new values, they would only need to levy seventy seven point eight mills. Hmm. The state and then the counties got into a legal dispute over what's right, and the Supreme Court said it's the 95 mills. And so the state got this windfall of money that will ultimately come back to schools to, to be redistributed and equalized across the state, you know, meeting that mandate for um, equity and, yeah. and state funding for schools. Um, but there's a misnomer that uh, these 95 mills meant that the school districts got a windfall of money. Wait a minute, my property, I know, I looked at my tax statement, my property taxes went up 40%, yeah. and you're asking for more money. I just gave you more money. And the answer is, no, we did not get a windfall. In fact, yeah, over all the budgeted funds in our elementary district, we got $50,000 less from the state last year than we did this year. Wow. So we're actually, and then the high school got a little bit more, but overall, we got less money from the state and more money from local taxpayers went into paying for our schools. And that's what breeds that frustration and that tax fatigue. And what we're hoping to um, make clear for our, our voters uh, and clear for our community is that we aren't coming to you asking for something that isn't needed. Yeah. We, we take our, our fiscal responsibility for providing for our students very seriously. We have had to make tremendous cuts uh, in our school district to balance our budget. Um, we have uh, pink slipped all of our non-tenured employees. Um, we may be in a position where we're actually riffing additional employees. And these levies will actually help support some of those positions. But we will still end up having cut roughly 100 positions out of MCPS. Yeah. And that's got to be very hard, very, very hard, hard to do. Yeah. 
and and the levies are very specific, seventy nine cents a year, dollar sixty five. Yep. You know, it's not like well, I'll just kick in, you know, an amount that seems very random. It, it does look like a lot of time and effort went into formulating what the needs are. Yeah, and you know, in our district, we work with a budget and levy committee that's made up of school board members, administrators, uh, representatives from our unions, and and we have to come to consensus on what are we going to do without moving forward, knowing that we can't cover it all, that we can't come to our taxpayers and ask for more. Um, and I think that probably the bigger challenge for us is just how do we communicate to our state legislators that this is a, a real challenge? And yeah. how do we not make this so impactful uh, for school districts? Uh, and I mentioned early on that you know we're not alone. Billings, Helena, Kalispell, uh, Bozeman, everybody is, is cutting millions of dollars out of their budgets, and it doesn't take into account the cost of living. Missoula yeah. is an expensive place to live. Bozeman is an expensive place to live. Kalispell. So when we're trying to provide salaries and benefits for our staff, it, 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 you can't cut it um, yeah. in, in these communities anymore. It's just it's, we've been outpriced. Gotcha. Um, well, let's mention where people could go for more information. If you're not tired of us yet and you want to learn more about, and, and it's not as grim, right? It's not as grim as we want it to sound, exactly. but it's a problem that needs to be taken yeah, care and of. Yeah, it's, it's, the sky is not falling. I don't want to pro project that, but we are having to make significant reductions. Yeah. Um, we are talking about reduced programs and services for our students, things that our community has come to value and, and, and love. And so, uh, and it's complicated. There, there's nothing. I'm, people yeah. Are probably you wish you could explain like, it, I, like, but yes. you'd try the funding. It's going to the state. There's the equalization. There's the 95 mil. Yeah, yeah 80 percent is covered by the state. Right. The other has to be voted in. Like what? So it's really complicated, and we try our best to explain that. We explain uh, how our ESSER dollars were spent. Um, there's quite a bit of information there. We have some frequently asked questions uh, and those kind of things. So if people want more information, you just want to look at our website. It's www mcpsmt.org slash levies. Yeah, so forward, forward slash levies. Forward slash levies. We'll give them a spelling lesson, L-E-V-I-E-S, -E -E not Y-S. Yes. <laughs> but I'm going to put it on the screen for you right now so you have time to jot it down. And you could go to that website and, and learn about these complicated issues at your own pace. Maybe we should tell people what they should expect in, in terms of timeline. Yep. They're going to get an all-mail election, yep. and we mean postal, and that's going to come uh, to your address, and the ballot needs to be filled out and due May 7th. Due May 7th. So ballots will actually be sent out starting April 17th. So people should be looking in their in their mailboxes to see those coming in, uh, but they do need to be returned by May seventh. Almost three weeks. Yep. So and they got to get there by May seventh. Got to get there yeah. by May seventh. Every year, hundreds and hundreds of ballots don't get counted because people don't get them mailed in in time. Yeah. Uh, and knowing that you know postal service can uh, sometimes be uh, right. It gets challenge. delays yeah, yeah, too. There's delays and, and different things that happen, but there are going to be drop off locations around the county. Oh, uh, good. For people to go to specific schools and in neighborhoods, um, the county election office, and I think there's some others that um, we'll be sure to really spell out in our uh, levy information. Great. And um, will they see a general fund levy request and a safety level uh, levy request separately on that ballot? Yes. Okay. Two, so so really, you can really pick and choose. I mean, it's trying to give an informed voter a chance yes. to say, well, or it's not, it's not uh, everything or nothing. Right. They can even choose what they think they can do. Yeah. So exactly. that's something. Well, Micah, thank you so much for taking the time Absolutely. to explain this. And is there anything that we didn't cover you want to add? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I would just say that, you know, if people have questions, please reach out. Um, you can email us. You can call. Um, our website's going to have a lot of information. Um, we want people to be informed voters, and we want them to understand what the purpose of the levies are, what they actually fund, uh, and... Uh, you know, again, we're just, you know, I can advocate for yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and we see this as critical. We would not come to our taxpayers knowing the fatigue, knowing the conversations that are happening um, in our community. Um, and so we're just hopeful. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much You're for welcome. taking the time. And thank you, dear viewer, for taking the time to learn more about MCPS uh, levy ballots coming up. Once again, you should be seeing these in your mailbox if it's mid-April. Um, 
uh, towards the end of April and you haven't seen it, please reach out and make sure you get a ballot so you can vote on the MCPS school levies coming up. Well, for MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. Thanks for watching.